Okay. All right. So if you're joining us again, and I see people are pop popping right back on again. So. Okay, good. Yeah. I apologize for the interruption, but we're going to try and pick up where we were. And I wish I could just splice these two together now. Cause like now there's going to be two separate ones. <laughs> That's right. The people who really want to know, they're going to, they're going to search them all out. It's fine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I'm going to just ask this question. I, I, um, I think we were at, at that point where the feed got interrupted, we were just talking about how common this um, exploitation, this internet, internet crimes against children are internet crimes in general are so common. And I have to ask, of course, is, have you seen an increase with COVID? How has that affected? things has that number yeah um i we hard to answer i mean yes and no we did see a spike um but now things have leveled off and so we're trying to determine if service providers were um employing other technologies or if there was a work from home uh, sort of an issue that was causing a lapse in um, service. This is on the service provider side, um, identifying these kinds of things. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I thought we would have kind of had a, a, a better assessment by now because it has been six months or so. Yeah. Um, I don't know if because, you know, parents are home more working from home. Um and maybe you're spending more time with children that that is um, um, it's causing a, a new dynamic that you know, people are having the conversations and our, our the engagement level is high with between parents and children. Sure. Um, so I don't know. I okay. we did see a big spike um, early on, but it's tapered and it's sort of returned to traditional levels. So okay. I'm not sure. It's Interesting. kind of a unique, yeah, it's kind of a unique um, dynamic, and I don't know. I imagine there's so many different elements. I mean, like you just said, I didn't even think of some of that, but um, like, you know, predators are home on their computers more without the supervision of their bosses, maybe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But yet, um, and then kids are on, certainly on technology probably more than ever, and mm -hmm. parents on their technology. But like you said, they're also getting all that information about, we need to watch out for what our kids are looking at. So I imagine there's just a lot of different elements um, play at play there. Um, so can you give some ways or some tips for ways we can prevent online exploitation as um, parents, grandparents, mentors, teachers, whatever, anybody who has contact with kids, like, what are some things we can do to help prevent? Because we really want this to not happen. We want to stop it up, you know, prevent it upstream rather than dealing with it once it's happened. Yeah, having the conversations, um, which I know is it's it's difficult for folks to have kind of these kinds of conversations. But being a parent, uh, being a teacher, being a person in a position of trust, um, those they're, those are difficult things. And so I know we can rise to the challenge and have the conversations, talk this through with um, our children um, as far as, you know, we need to prepare them or position them. So when, um, unfortunately, when we have to, it's not an if, it's a when, but um, when someone reaches out to them and they're by themselves and, you know, they need to be prepared to ignore, delete. it's okay to ignore people, delete people, not respond to people. Uh, take a screenshot, capture information to tell somebody about it. Um, we don't have to respond to people. We don't have to answer a phone call from a number we don't know. It's likely, you know, some sort of a spam or a scam kind of a thing. Okay. Um, it's okay to, to say no. So preparing children so when they're confronted with this situation and they feel like they need to make a, a decision quickly, that they've already had the time to think this through, what would I do if this were to happen to me? Um, so they're prepared and they, yeah. they don't feel like, okay, if I just take this one picture, this will all go away. Like role, role playing. And I love, I love what you just said, not if it happens, but when it happens. I mean, I, I myself have read a statistic that 
you know, if your kid has been online, I mean, what is there, is there, a, I know there's a statistic. I don't know how accurate. I don't put a ton of credit in some statistics, but uh, just about everybody's been touched, so to speak, um, virtually by some sort of predator. Seen, seen is the word by a predator at, at some point, would you say? Yeah, I, I believe actually the National Center has some um, data on that on their website that you okay. showed um, earlier. I, bl I believe they do have some information that kind of that okay. that goes to that. But you're right; it's yeah, it's scary. Yeah, there's a question here, Matt. Um, someone asks if you find inappropriate material on on a phone, is it true to put it on airplane mode and not turn it off, but take directly to the law enforcement? Uh oh, did I lose you again? Oh, there you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if the phone is a, is a phone that you know you control, it's your family's phone, your child's phone, or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, putting it in airplane mode, leaving it turned on. I mean, the nice thing is, is that you know the passcode or the you know the the pin code or the passwords, and you can give consent for law enforcement to look at the device and extract those kinds of pieces of information. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, to have the best success um, in extracting the most amount of information, if it's um, not a device that we control necessarily, um, yeah, I'd leave it turned on airplane mode so folks can't manipulate data um, and leaving it turned on so that, um, believe it or not, actually leaving the phone turns, turned on, powered um, on, it, it enables more and better information to be gleaned from oh. that so that is true that's important but um yeah the nice thing is if it's your phone you have the passcode and the, the pin and so that will be yeah you know we don't have to worry about trying to bypass a locked device um i just want to say to the audience if you have any questions at this point feel free to drop them and we're running a couple minutes late because of our technical difficulty i am going to blame it on that <laughs> yeah i have no, something to blame running here. late i am going to use it let me tell you so if anybody um there are some people on back on. We don't have as many as, as were, but um, if you have any questions, um, I'm going to just ask you, Matt, do you have any, anything else on that whole um, line of prevention that you, you know, whether it be even safety features or parental monitoring apps or anything like that, do you recommend anything like that? Yeah, I think um, so depending on what provider you have, for your cellular phone service, I would recommend going to their website, um, the Verizons and the US Cellulars and whatever all companies there are out there. They have different features available to their customers that you might find very helpful. Um, and I forget the names of them, but to kind of help families connect or stay connected and um, I'll say monitor or help um, enable certain features and those kinds of things. So I would definitely check out your company's websites and ask, ask the techie guys, right? Oh, you froze on me, Matt. Hopefully it's going to, hopefully it's going to, um, refresh. Oh, there you are. Okay. You're back. I think. Nope. Yeah. That was not a flattering, uh, screen still <laughs> Well, you should see how mine ended on the last one. <laughs> Not flattering either. <laughs> oh, this is fun. We have to do this again. We we should. I would love to do that. There's so much to talk about on this topic, and so I'll 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 work a little bit more on my technology. Um, I am going to. Um, before we go, I am right now. While well, you stay on there for a second, because I'm going to click on to our. Okay, I have to undo this. See, I, I'm not supposed to talk while I do this, Matt. That's what makes it look unprofessional. <laughs> just, just, just do it. Now it's not. Now it's not switching. Okay, you guys, I have a really cool. Okay, that's off. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So I, I, yes. So I want people to take a look at this website because there's a lot of information on here. Um, I'm right now on the Wisconsin Department of Justice Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force homepage. And you'll see that there's, uh, I'm just gonna kind of scroll. There's information about the organization, what, what they do. 
talks a little bit about stuff there. Um, but well, there's Matt's mugshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not but sure not why that is on there. <laughs> but this podcast series is fantastic. So I'm just going to click real quick. Um, well, first I'm going to go to this Interact. Can you tell us just real briefly about the Interact? Yeah, Interact is a collaboration with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Um, and we're trying to develop different modules to help folks exactly what we're talking about, um, have the conversations, work through some different things um, with children. And so we're just, we've built out two modules now. We've got them um, Spanish interpretation now as well. Oh boy, we froze again. Come back to me, Matt. I lost you again. <laughs> You're still connected, I can see, but I can't hear you yet. Okay, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, there we go. Yeah, um, so just a lot of great information, short modules, you know, 20 minutes maybe to work okay. through, 30 minutes, um, and we're going to continue to build those with DPI, and we're excited about what those are, are going to look like. And they're a resource really nationally um, okay. for, for anybody, so I encourage okay. folks to to try those and give us feedback, please. This is something new that we've put together and um, looking for the feedback. I, I've been listening to some of the podcasts and I uh, over time, I mean, ever since I've been on your um, newsletter list, here's where you can submit your uh, Protect Kids Online podcast questions, which I think I'm going to submit one. You'll see Please my Please do. <laughs> Good. Do you monitor yeah, no, these? We appreciate you... <laughs> that. Uh, my, my colleagues do. Okay. <laughs> Um, but anyways, and then also to get on the email or on, yeah, on the email list as well, there's, and so, oh, this, I want to show real quick, um, the internet, um, the ICAC affiliates that we talked about. So you can go to the, the page and then you can click on your County on our County here, Washington County, you know, and then it gives, um, oh, there they are right there. Yeah, up at the top, yeah. Yep, Germantown, Police Department, Hartford, uh, Jackson, Washington County Sheriff's Department, West Bend, West Bend Boys and Girls Club. So a total total number of affiliates in Wisconsin, 293. So there's just, and then there's this one here, you guys, resources and materials. And also, and there's lots of materials and videos and all sorts of stuff, but then there's victim services. And I found this to be, um, as an advocate, I, I was happy to see this. This is a really great um, thing, kind of helps people exactly um, what we were talking about. Like, what do you do? And it kind of gives some more information there. I'm going to bring Matt back real quick here if I can and myself. And uh, Matt, there was one question that I missed earlier. So I see it now. Um, what is the number of that Wisconsin state statute you mentioned earlier? Do you have that handy or did you bury that paper already? Or do you know it by heart? The, oh, trafficking of a child? Yeah, I think that's what she meant. Uh, so crimes against children in Wisconsin are chapter 948. It's 948 and it's going to be, um, 051. Okay. 948. Oh, uh, yeah. 948.051. Okay. Uh, one last question then we're going to go. Should advocacy groups check with their local police department? as to who they go to when finding inappropriate materials on devices, and then they know what to tell their local community? It's an interesting question, yeah. Um, so do we ask yeah. Yeah, for a name? Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea to reach out and build those relationships. It's all about having these relationships so that we're prepared and we, we kind of know um, everyone in the, you know, who's kind of working in on these, um, on these issues, um, to have the conversations and, and talk about it. I think that's a great idea to build the relationship. Um, yeah. no, I, I, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Any final words? I'll give it to you. Oh, wow. Do that okay. Often. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, no, I appreciate your attention to this. Let's do it again, Wendy. There, okay. there is a lot of information. Um, yeah, the podcasts are great. We try to keep them 10, 15 minutes. Um, the interact really, um, as we build out those programs, really looking for folks feedback on that. Um, cause we want to, 
the task force is not only about investigating and you know arresting and prosecuting, um, and certainly uh, there's the victim advocacy components, but it's also about prevention and education and outreach. And so um, that's a very important part of it. And so I appreciate the work that you're doing in your area to keep this on everybody's radar because it is a it's it's a very big problem. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really, I joke, but I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate everything you're doing um, just in general in law enforcement. So thank you for that, too, for your service. Oh, of course. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. You have a good night. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to end this and um, stay tuned for the next scheduled um, uh, Facebook Live event, which hopefully the next time we will get it streamed to the right page. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.